command line tools for Unix. So as we said in our Windows lecture, our command line tools are used to configure and troubleshoot our networks by giving text-based commands at an operating system prompt. These commands can be used on either our clients or our servers, and the commands we're going to cover in this lecture are specific to an operating system that are all based on Unix. Unix operating systems are things like Linux, OS X, and BSD. So if you're using a Mac system or a Linux variant, you're going to be able to use these commands as well. A lot of these will work on Windows, but some of them will not because they're specific to Unix only. So Unix is implemented in various operating systems, including Unix, BSD, Linux, and Macintosh OS X. The command syntax between Unix and Windows is often slightly different, although many of them share the same syntax. In Unix, we can get help from what we call man pages. And so if you ever have a, a problem and you don't know how to use a command, if you type in man, which stands for manual, and then the command name, so for instance, man ping, it'll give you all the information you could ever want on ping. In Windows, a lot of times you could do this by typing the command name and then slash question mark. So the first one we're going to cover is ARP, which stands for Address Resolution Protocol. It shows you the MAC address for layer 2 for a known layer 3 address. If you do ARP TAC A, just like Windows, it's going to display the current ARP table. ARP TAC D in the IP, it'll delete the mapping, and ARP TAC S will create a static mapping, just like we did in our Windows versions. IFconfig works exactly like uh, the Windows version as far as if you want to uh, find information on it. Um, the difference here is in Windows we called it ipconfig, in Linux and Unix we call it ifconfig, which stands for interface config. It will display your IP information based on the parameters for Unix workstation. The output will show up a little bit different than Windows, but it will contain much of the same details. If you notice here on the left I used ifconfig. Uh, dash A, which will provide you the additional information. It's like the all, the slash all in Windows. And so if you notice here, we do have, whether it's a, a local loopback or we have an Ethernet, we have our hardware address, which is our MAC address. We do have our receive and sent packet information, which will give us some, some statistics, and it will give you your IP address as well. Uh, this particular one doesn't have an IP address assigned yet, but if you look at the loopback address, we do have one assigned right here with our subnet mask, and that's the reference is the LO interface. IFconfig uh, down will actually turn off a network adapter. IFconfig up IFconfig up will actually turn on a network adapter. So you can actually do this through the software to turn it off and turn it on physically. Ping works just like it did in Windows with one little exception. So on Unix, when you use ping to check your IP connectivity between two network devices, you're actually going to have it run forever. It's like using the TACT command in Windows. So if I do ping jasondion.com, it'll just keep pinging over and over and over again. It doesn't do the default of four the way Windows did. Now in Windows, we had the TACT n command for number of times we want to do it. In Unix, we use TACT c for count. So ping TACT c 10 www.jasondion.com will ping 10 times and stop. Uh, if you do ping TAC6, that's going to use IPv6 routing just like it did before. Notice in the left here, we did a ping of google.com. It started going forever, and so we hit control C, which gave us this control C character here, and broke out of it, and then summarized the statistics for us just like Windows would. Trace route. So in Windows, we had it, it used trace RT. Here we use trace route. Same thing, it works the exact same way. You're going to trace your, your path from one from your IP all the way to your destination, counting the hops in between, the routers in between. You can do it based on IP address, or you can do it based on name, just as we did here. In the example, we have it going to www.uk.debian.org, and you can see it traced out 14 different hops on the way, telling it how long it took to get to each one. Netstat. Netstat displays information for IP connections on a PC just like we did in Windows. We have the same commands we did before, the A and the N, A for all, N for your port numbers in numerical form. Uh, we also have S for our statistics, just like we did in Windows. There's no difference here, so it makes it very easy to go from one to the other. NSLOOKUP. So NSLOOKUP will work just like it did in Windows. It has that non-interactive mode uh, or an interactive mode. Additionally, we have host which does the same thing as NSLOOKUP. It works a lot the same way, but it will just give you a single one-line answer. So if you type in host jasondm.com, it'll pop back up with a single response of what your IP is. With NSLOOKUP, you can find more details, such as the MX records, the uh, A records, and all of that kind of stuff, 
Uh, as you can see here, we can see the A record for Yahoo. That's their internet address uh, that it's telling us, and these are the authoritative servers for it and not authoritative servers for it. Dig. Dig is another way to do uh, name server lookup, and it will give you a fully qualified domain name to an IP address that's even more detailed than the information you got in NS lookup. So Dig has no interactive mode. Um, you can do, like, if you want to get the mail records, you would do dig, tac-t, mx for mail record, uh, and then google.com, and it will come back with your mail records for Google. As you can see here, when we gave that command, we end up getting the mail records for Google, which is these names, and it will pop back up with the uh, IP addresses for those. Remember, mx records are for mail, a records are for addresses. Route. Route again is going to work very similar to what we used in Windows. It's going to give, it's going to allow you to change or display the contents of the IP routing table. If you just type route on Unix though, it will print it to the screen for you, where we had to use route print in Windows. So here we do route and up will show up our display. And again, you want to look for that default gateway. Here we have it, default gateway 0000, with the mask of 0000, and it goes out that gateway to get off the network. If you do route tac n, that will display the contents of the IP routing table, including your default gateway. Notice when we did route originally, there is no default gateway, but when I did route tac n, the default gateway shows up as well. And those are our basic Unix and Linux, uh, Unix Linux command line tools.